Boom. Okay, Johnny. Here we go. So this is my uh, EOB, my Ed O'Brien signature Strat. Okay. Um, it. I love this guitar. Uh, Ed gave this to me as a thank you. So my little name drop horn. Uh, Ed gave this to me as a thank you um, for some work that I did for him. Uh, but what I'm really keen on doing is getting this set out. Um, I, I, it sounds great, but it, it feels a bit uh, stiff. I don't know if that's the right terminology. Okay. Um, well, the first thing I would do... So is this the gauge of string you're going to be using? I think the gauge of string you're using is a little bit heavier. Okay. I tried some lighter strings on that because um, it was feeling so stiff with the, the heavier strings. So, so I, I thought maybe a, a set of lighter strings would be better, but this hasn't really... But I don't know whether this rattly noise that I'm hearing... That little barking yeah. thing. And I'm not sure, is that's not, let's take that off, just to check that it's not the trim arm rattling in there. But there's a, there's a, there's an overtone there that I don't like. But yeah, so something's but rattling, something right? Something sounds like something is doing something. And whether that's bottoming out on there. So that's the bass player of the... Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. That might be what's causing that. So you find a, um, a little piece of timber like this, which is why I leave these pieces. That's what the mess at the back of the bench is for. <laughs> There's little bits like this, little shaving off a strut. Will. No, it's still there. So you go, well, I don't like it, and I don't know what it is. So we could spend hours trying to work out what it is, whether it's some of these little plates rattling. Right. The more gubbins you put on a guitar, the more you've got to rattle. <laughs> so whether that comes out the other end, when you've got the whole, your rig yeah, yeah, yeah. overdriven and distorted, you know, is... Uh, you just might say, well, I never hear that. Sure. You know, and, um, but being an acoustic guitar builder, I suppose that's all I'm hearing all the time, and I'm trying to get as clean a sound out of an electric guitar as possible. Right. I want everything to sing, sing beautifully. The, that becomes a bit loose. Yeah. Right. That could make a funny little rattle. Yeah. yeah. And if yeah. you've got something like that, that is uh, rattling, it's robbing the energy of the, the, the vibration of the string. That's yes, right, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's highly likely to. It's, it's amazing what funny little knock-on effect of something rattling in one place is having on, 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 on somewhere else. Sure. It's, it drives guitar builders <laughs> absolutely potty trying to work out where a rattle is in the guitar. Are there little loose screws here? You know, sometimes one screw can be completely loose. Um, one of these little grub screws, mm -hmm. they can, the things can rattle through here, through the, through, through the nut if it's an old guitar. In terms of just general playability, to go back to where you were, your first question, the first thing I will do is have a, have a measure of the action right. and, and see where it is. Because you're saying, oh, it's not as easy to play as I'd like it to be. Mm. And I've got 1.6 mil there and maybe two mil there, mm -hmm. which isn't horrendously high at all. Mm. Um, it's a little bit high. You've got the trem set flat. Right. If we made the trem float, i.e. Help? there's a gap at the back, it might, it okay. might help because we'll get, we'll get more of an effect of the elasticity of those springs. Oh, interesting. And okay. that might make it feel a little bit different. Okay. I mean, a lot of these things you have to try. Sure. There's no... I haven't come up with a set of hard and fast rules mm. about setting guitars up. Um, sometimes I've noticed that actually making the action higher on a guitar by slackening the truss rod off right. makes the guitar easier to play. So I'm, the truss rod confuses me. I don't fully understand. 
I understand that if you tighten the truss rod, the neck straightens out, and if you loosen the truss rod, you get more relief. Yeah. I don't understand how the truss rod is doing that. So looking at the neck sideways, mm -hmm. you've got a headstock, and you've got the neck here. On yours, the, t the tightening th is occurring at this end, and, the st and it's stopped at this end. Right. And it'll be underneath that walnut piece that you'll see it. Now the rod will be set into the neck near the back edge of the neck and it'll probably be slightly in a curved trench just to accommodate that lump. So uh, the actual the actual trench it sits in isn't straight, it's curved. Probably more than likely it is curved, just right. so that you can get the access point at this end, so you can get the screwdriver up there mm -hmm. on it and just to accommodate that bulk of that anchor point. Right. If you didn't have to do that, it would probably work better if it was just near the back edge of the neck. And that near the back edge of the neck, that gap there, might be three to four millimeters. Is that all? For it to work properly. But the, and the reason why it works is because if you've got a plank of wood like this, mm -hmm. And if you if if we if we compress it here and here at the back edge, so we put force on that. Mm -hmm. If you thought of that as being a loaf of soft bread or something mm -hmm. or sponge, it would it would do that by squashing the back edge of it. So even though, if we assume that this is a straight line. Yeah. Even by putting force on it, it will still bend. Like that. Ah, so, th so this so it's doesn't like, have to be curved yeah. like this. This could still be a straight line. It as could long be as a straight back. line, yeah. We, if you so it's actually, as you're tightening up here, and what it's doing is, it's it's, 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 this, it. dis, it's this distance between the two ends here that's coming yeah, in yeah. and, and it that's shortens bending it. in there. Yeah. If I could bend that, if I could squash that, yeah, mm. right. it'll it'll yeah, do that. It'll yeah, do yeah. it'll see it create. A, you can see it bending on that top edge. Right, and that's the effect of it. Now it can only act one way. It can only bend it backwards. Right, the strings, of course, are pulling it in the opposite direction. So the so as we put right, and so the strings then are basically doing this job, but up here. Yeah, the string the the strings are making it go like that because the strings are pulling that way, aren't they? If you thought, if you take it to the extreme and you didn't have a truss rod in there and that was a weak piece of timber, mm -hmm. you strung it up there. It's because it's a, in engineering terms, it's an eccentrically loaded strut. Right. Which um, I'd never knew until my father told me that's what it was. And it's because he was an, an, aer an, aer an, aer an aeronautical engineer in the Second World War. Oh, wow. This is what he was designing. The stress is going not down the centre of it, which would be the most yes. sensible place yes, to make course. a neck stay straight. We'll, right. put, we'll put the string up the middle. <laughs> but we want the string on the top, so yeah. it's, it's loaded off centre. Right. So it's going to bend. Okay. And the rod there is there to make it not bend. I know that a dead, flat, straight neck isn't desirable. Is that right? It's desirable for some players. Okay. So it's all... Some players, it's all personal. Right. And I, I kind of think it's... Um, the lower your action, um, maybe the straighter your neck is going to be. Okay. And then if you're wanting... Uh, a higher action, you give it a little bit more relief. Well, that's okay. the vague equation. Right. So let's let's talk about relief then. What, so if we... Less tension generally means more relief, which means the neck is going to come forward. Forwards. And sometimes it makes guitar easier to play with that higher action because the neck is not as stiffened by the action of the rod, I think. Okay. But it's kind of, as I say, there's no hard and fast rules about this. Right. It's, a lot of it is is fiddling with each individual guitar until it goes, well, that's, I think, as good as I can get that one to feel. Sure. Okay, so if you're going to um, sight the curve of this neck, yeah. how do you do that? Um, in order for me to work out what the relief is, first of all, I'll look up and down the neck. 
So you look from, from the, headstock. the headstock. From the headstock, okay. I find it easier to look at the headstock. Right. And if you if you if you use the the string, you know is a straight line. Okay. Right. And you can kind of look sideways on the edge of the neck, and uh, sight up and down it, and you can see that a little bit of a. You know, a light bow, a light bit of relief in this, and you look both sides to see whether it's. You know, and I'd say there's more of a a bend down the bottom on this treble side. Then the other way, that, that just tells me whether there's a great big kick, kick up, up at the end. Oh, I go, oh, find the out. Is it, or is it, does it look like there's an S bend in it? Right. You know. <laughs> um, and then the other way that I use for deciding what how much relief is in there is I have to get my other eyesight enhancers on. <laughs> and with the light coming through the window here, mm -hmm. I'll fret the fret, fret the first string perhaps, on the first fret, and I'll fret it down here at the bottom, at the other end of the fretboard, and I can, again, I'm using the string as a straight edge, and I can bounce the string up and down on the fret, and I'll do it in a few different places to see. But I would suggest that we've got more relief in that than I would like. And people are always saying, well, how much relief should you have? Um, okay, and so it might be, the gap might be halfway down, mm -hmm. might be 10 or 20 thou. Right. Which you're going to go, how do I measure that? It's, you know, think of the string diameter. So... You wouldn't. You might want it anywhere between the thickness of the first string and the thickness of the third string. If and it wasn't bouncing, you'd know the straight. The neck would be dead straight or was going backwards. Yes, of course. There's a little like, bit more relief than I would have probably. I probably want. Sure. So I'm. I would be thinking. Oh well, let's let's give Dan's truss rod a bit of a tighten, and then we can maybe maybe get his action down a little bit lower without him choking off up here because of the because of the things coming up in the air here very slightly because there's more there's more relief okay well let's because so, i want to put different strings on it anyway yeah. so if we whip those um whip those strings off it and then we'll get the neck off it and then tweak and the other thing that i'm looking at when i'm down here mm -hmm. doing this is i'm looking to see how much height excess height there is on the nut which is something that nobody at, ho at home is going to be able to adjust Unless, okay. unless they've got a set of nut files sure, and a set of these goggles or extremely young eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do it without these. But what, I, what I'm doing here is a similar thing to the, to the relief. But if you, if you look, get the camera and look sideways here, if I'm fretting it on the second fret, holding the string down on yep. the second fret, yep. and then I'm looking at that gap there on the first oh, fret, can you see that? Yes. And if you do that and run across every string, you can go, oh, there's excess height on the nut there. How, so there. what do we want to see? Well, you want to see a little bit of a gap. I think the nut needs to be a smidgen, whatever that is, higher than the line of the frets. Okay. It's because when you pluck the open string, the string can vibrate a little bit more than when you've got a fretted note because it's finger is absorbing some of that energy right so you need just a little bit more height i think if you're playing the guitar on your open strings and it's making a horrible buzz noise mm -hmm. which disappears as soon as you fret it mm -hmm. you know that nut slot is lower than the first fret yeah and okay. you need to do something about that right and whether that is a new nut or whether you go well, actually i'm in the middle of nowhere and i'm got to do a gig tonight so i'm going to put some is it a cigarette paper in there is it There's a bit a of tin glue. foil or is it a bit of super glue and 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 dust Get bone dust you yeah, know right. but it's you know so but most people won't have a tube of super glue on them so it's but it's a bit of cigarette paper a bit of there. cigarette paper or a bit of tin foil off your chocolate bar or something <laughs> we'll we'll just prop it up enough to get you through the gig right you know so what gauge are we going to go up a gauge and string or down a gauge up 
So we're going to go. So we got. Well, so got, when you're going to go up a gauge and string, I've got to guess. There's even more. There's going to be more of a forward yeah, pull. Okay. Therefore, I go. Well, let's give it a bit more of a yank. Okay. Let's whip the strings off and, and see see what's inside. Okay. Let's continue. Right. Right. So, what does it say? Any messages for you? 21st of February 2017. A fine vintage that was. <laughs> so, the things I look at when I take these apart is to see how flat the surface is of, the, of that. Right. And, you know, if you, if you did this on a 70s fender, you would find this would have a great <laughs> oh, wow. rolled edge on it and you'd go, well, how on earth is anything going to match up? So that's that's nice and flat. Marvellous. And the idea is that you want the two flat you surfaces. You want them too flat, flat, flat to flat. Yeah, if it's yeah. kind of a, a flat surface and a rounded surface, the thing is going to slide all over the place. Right. Um, and, you know, likewise with that, if it's if it's not... Flat. Sometimes there's a load of paints built up somewhere that you right. go. Well, let's. We can't possibly sit square. Things like that. When I mean, the machining round there, the, the back there is not that wonderful. See, it's sort of a slight, slight ridge there in the oh, corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether that's stopping it sitting down properly, I don't know. And you go, yeah, well, when you start taking a guitar apart, it says there was a nasty lump of stuff there. But, it, you know, again, if it's an antique instrument yeah, and it's got a load them. of marks on it, nobody's yeah. going to want you to disappear that. Of course. And you might not want me to disappear that, you know. But if it's, uh, you know, depends on your attitude. To, to I just want it to be awesome, whatever that takes. I mean, I do th have an idea. I, I think guitars get softer to play with time. Right. We were going to do the truss rod, weren't we? Mm -hmm. just, Let's have a look at that. It's, it's distracted. So there's the adjusting end of this rod. Okay. And if you turn it clockwise, mm -hmm. it'll tighten it up. Yep. If I turn it anti-clockwise, It'll loosen it. Yep. So what I usually do is at this point I will want to see how straight it is. So without the string tension on it is more or less a straight line. Okay. Okay. With the string tension on it, we had relief, mm -hmm. more relief than we wanted. Yep. We're going up a gauge of strings from 10s to 11s. Yep. So this needs to be adjusted so it's got a bit of a back bend mm -hmm. so that when the strings, the heavier strings come on it, it lifts it back up. Lift so. it. If we were putting tens back on it, it would have to be a little bit tighter, which would give it a gap back bow. And that's the guesswork as to how much do you give it. Right. And then also what I want to do is before I start tightening this up, I want to see where it is. Okay. Because you don't want to bust it. Sure. And it is, you can strip and bust truss rods. Now there's no, there's, so I'm undoing it anti-clockwise and there's no, Tension. tension on that whatsoever. So with no tension on it, it's straight. With no it's tension, fitter. it's straight, which is good. Right. Um, which means we've got plenty of... Plenty of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah It's yeah, a bit yeah. like getting a set of shoes for the kids that have got room for their feet to grow. It's okay. That, that's how I look at, the, you know, it's that type of philosophy. Because the neck is only going to sag more and more and more as it gets older and older, yeah, as it no okay. normally. Right. So I want to tighten this up a good bit and just see what it's doing. So I don't know how many turns I gave it then. And then we look at this and go, OK, it's moved a little bit, but not an awful lot, which means... So there's no set rule with this. This is all individual per neck. Yeah. And it depends where that rod is in the middle of the neck. 
if it was in the middle in the in the right near the back edge of that neck where i'd like it to be mm -hmm. i'd give it so here we are that's up to bearing point i'm giving that that's a quarter of a turn and it's t pretty tight and that's another six so i've gone round that much yeah i've gone a third of the way round. okay yep yeah, the clock's on at 20 past. So there we are. We're starting off at 12 o'clock. Yep. And now I'm turning it to quarter past. Yep. And now to 20 past. Okay. And that, that feels quite tight. There's quite a lot of, you know, quite a lot of pressure, pressure we put on it. And it's bent the neck back quite a nice long way. But I, it, 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 it's probably not as back far in the neck as it, as it could be. Right. You know, it's probably, it might even be five millimetres deep there. We are now going to stick it back on again. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see whether that has gone back on in the same angle as it came off. Sure. Now the other thing is we're going up a gauge. Yep. So we've got to check that these nut slots are okay for these strings. Right. How's it looking? Well, it's quite tight in there. You, you might, if you, you know, if you haven't got anything like a nut file, I guess you could do a bit of filing with the, with the with nut. The actual string? You know, but it's, it doesn't feel like it's that far off. Okay. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna give us too many problems. Are you gonna use this trem? Um, I'd like to. And do you gonna have it floating? A little bit. Okay, good. I don't, good. I mean, yeah. Okay, because we can, you want to make sure the nut is lubricated. That's another ah, okay. thing to, to obviously trams, point of friction. Yep. Point of friction. What sort of nut is that? It's a, it'll be a, it'll be a, it's, it'll be what Fender describes as a bone nut, which is actually made of plastic. Ah, okay. I think. Don't sue me. Fender bone. Fender bone. Yes. Well, there's a little packet they sell you. It says it's a bone nut, but it's made of plastic. Fender's fanny bony. But uh, they'll sue us. <laughs> Don't sue us. Please. We haven't got any money. <laughs> How many turns do you put on? Right, yeah, well, this is it. On this guitar, you haven't got staggered height posts. Right. They're all the same. So you've got the... I, I've, I'm guessing, I'm guessing I've got about three inches extra. Mm-hmm. Which I hope your viewers do inches. That's uh, 75 mil, isn't it? Is it 1.8? Yeah, it's 75 mil. Right. So on this, it, it will depend on the actual headstock a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. But you don't want too much angle on this six string, or otherwise you're gonna get downward pressure and more friction in the nut. So I'm going for two, two loops. Whoops, it's popped off. Two, two turns on that first capstan. Okay, and then that's if I'd if I'd had three turns on the capstan, I'd have had even more angle. Right. Which I don't want. I want just enough. But you've got to have at least a turn and a half, or it isn't going to work. I don't think. So you've got to have some downward pressure. You've got to have, too yeah. Much. Okay. But if, yeah, if the if the if it was a taller capstan, I'd have three turns. Sure. But okay. you don't you don't need that. You only need that much angle, really. Right. But there's nothing you can do about it on sure. this. Just have to keep your fingers crossed. Now this one's going to have maybe three turns, so I'm giving it a bit a bit longer. Right. This this one hasn't got a fourth and third string tree. Right. So you, you, you want to make sure you have got angle here, especially on the third string. Okay. So you want lots of, you know, maximum turns to get it right down the bottom to get as plenty of angle. Okay. Because I want the angle on that third, because it's a horrible noise when that's rattling through yeah, there. Yeah, right. Do you know that noise? I do. When the nut gets a little bit warm bit vibrating on the other side. Uh -huh. It's a horrid noise. 
So I've probably got four turns on that third string. Right. And on an old one, you'd be looking at the um, the wear and tear on the on these saddles. Right. And you can see on these saddles, the machining is a little bit rough. Okay. It is quite. You know, with the magnifying goggles on, you can see there's quite a lot of texture in that, mm -hmm. on that surface, but... That's not what we want. There's not, yeah, but there's not much you can do about it now. We could try polishing it, but you probably polish through the chrome right. plate. But on old guitars, it's, 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 it's well, well grooved. Okay. And it, it creates string breaking problems. Oh, uh, yeah, right. So you do have to smooth it out with little needle files and gradually polish it back up again. Mm -hmm. And because the smoother that transition for the string going over the saddle is, the less likely it is to break. Sure. And if it's pointed on one sharp point, it's going to put the stress on a shorter bit of the string and it's going to break. So then we go up this end here and snip off. And I have a habit of doing the zigzag on these last two. Yep. Do you ever do that? Yep. You do? Yep, absolutely. Okay. So I go across, that's it. Oh, well, you're a, that's interesting. I've never come across anyone else that does that. On the last two of them, yep. I zigzag them. Well, I do it on the first. Well, do you do it on the third yeah, as well? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm glad I'm not completely stupid. <laughs> So the string tree, yeah. the string tree is control the to control the amount of break angle over the nut, right? Yeah, and on the on these top two, because this is further away, you've mm -hmm. got virtually no break angle right. at all. If you go for the type of machines that have got the staggered height posts, right? Obviously, it brings this down here mm -hmm. and gives you a bit more angle, and you can do away with that point of friction, right? <coughs> So we'll have, this 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 one here is one of these um, circular doodars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the string is going up and through here. Got so it. if you're being thorough, you have a look at the machining on here, and make sure there's no little machining mark. You know, you could easily get a, a bird edge. Yeah, right. On that, which would cause you a problem. So just a little bit of needle file, give it a a smooth transition. Not good. Back and forth. Your attention to detail is just. I mean, I thought my attention to detail was good. Yours is it's, alarming. It's sad. <laughs> it's sad. It's sad, isn't it? And then the other thing is is to is to grease up that so you can use a bit of grease or a bit of um, this is kind of household grease. Okay. You know, um, Vaseline, petroleum jelly. Mm -hmm. The wife didn't like this brand, so I got it. It's not. It's not. It's not Vaseline. It's Boots Special. You see, so <laughs> she says it's no. It's it's horrible. I don't like this. It's much thicker. I said it won't make any difference to a guitar. I'll take that to work. So um. And you can use this in the nut. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah, I'll use this. I'll use it in a bone nut as well. Plastic nuts don't absorb anything, which is why it might not be a great idea. Right. But there are all those products like nut sauce. That have got uh, okay. that have got Teflon inside them. Right. But a boat, a, a plastic nut's probably just as well if you haven't got those things. Is a, is a, is a piece of soft pencil. Yeah, right. And so all you do is you got a soft pencil, and take the string out of the slot. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut these slots in a minute, but I'll show you what I'm doing. So you lift it out, mm -hmm. scrunch a bit of dust in there, and then pop the string back on top. Ah, and it's just shaving a bit of dust off, and it shaves it off better if it's a hard piece of bone than the plastic. Right, but that just sits there and lubricates it because graphite's a great lubricant because it's slippery. Right, yeah, it's not as slippery as Teflon. 
Okay. So those kind of products like that sauce, that sauce and, and other things have got Teflon in it, and they will probably work a little bit better. Then, oh, but fantastic. I have never got round to buying any. And I've always got, I'm going to buy you some. I've always got a pencil. I'm going to buy you some. I'm I put mixing my heads on it so that every time you use the nut <laughs> sauce, you'll think of yeah. me and Mick. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. So you've brought those up to pitch a little bit. Yeah, so sort of. Is, is this a Mexican guitar? Is it going mm -hmm. to be metric or... Or is it going to be... Is it going to be... Yeah, okay. There's another little point to bear in mind when you're doing this job mm -hmm. is everything that comes out of the USA is going to have imperial hex keys mm -hmm. and then everything else is going to most likely have metric ones. Right. So this is a Mexican guitar mm -hmm. and these have got actually got an imperial hex key. Ah. Um which you, you you don't really know what what you're going to find. Sometimes some some American makes do use metric parts. Sure. Um. So you've got to you know have both sets really. But mm -hmm. there are. You know, be aware there's imperial and there's metric. Sure. But okay. I guess you go to a um a a store like Stumac. Right. They'll have and them. they'll they'll sell you all those bits. So I've just had a look down the neck. Okay. And have, you brought, have you brought it up to pitch? It's up to pitch. Okay, it's up to pitch. So, what do you think? Well, it looks a lot straighter, doesn't that it? That looks really nice to me. Oh, There's gosh. a very, very fine um, curve, but very fine. Okay, yeah, it's just off. Just it's off. It's just off straight, which is worthwhile probably just setting fiddling, setting that up with that and see what, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. See what it feels like. Um, can I adjust the nut for you? You can do whatever you yeah. want, mate. Isn't something anybody's going to do at home, but it's. Um, let's find some nut files. If we were going to start this again from scratch with a fret dress, yeah. would you necessarily have to change the nut? No, no, no. Only, only if even only if you've run out of height. Right. Okay. Or it's in the wrong spacing. Right. Um, or. People would say, I don't want the plastic nut on, no, sure. I want bone, bone. Yep. or I want Teflon impregnated right. plastics or something, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, there's no, there's no need, there's no need to do that. Um, there's nothing wrong with this one. Mm -hmm. So we've got 11 to 48 yeah. on these, and you're just, you're opening the, the, the nut up a no, bit? No, I just want to get a little bit of, I've, it's just slightly too high. Right. So... You might as well start off at the right point. And there are a number of ways of doing this job. Some people do it with measuring the gap of the height of the fret, feeler gauge things, and then filing down until you've got the right, the same height as the feeler gauge that you've... But I just kind of use that string as a straight edge system. Right. And just look at the gap. People do change the to to bone for tone. Bone oh, for tone. They go, oh, it sounds better with bone. So change it over, please. So if they want me to do that, I'll do it, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, then there's the third string here, it's the nasty one. To try not to get it to vibrate at the other end. Mm -hmm. How far down should the string be sitting in the nut? Well... I mean, how much excess nuts should be poking up? Yes. Same thing. Yeah. Because um, some people think it should only be halfway through the string. Yeah, but it's kind of, yes, I know what you mean. It's, I used to think that mm. until I... Had made 500 guitars. No, no, no. Kind of, I, 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 I put a new bone nut on a bass player. Mm. 
And I went, well, let's, you know, let's trim off the excess so it's not looking, you know, too much. And he and he started, you know, he's a name player, this. Mm -hmm. And he and he and he started bending the strings, you know, all over the place, right down here, like mad. I thought, and and he was just popping the nut, popping the, the string out, out of the, the nut. nut. And I said, I've never seen anybody play like that. But <laughs> he was bending the strings like you'd bend a, a, a guitar with a set of nines on it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and and so it needed this extra. Right. It needed yeah, this height to yeah. keep them in place. So I thought, well, it's 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 it's, it's down to how the player plays. Yeah. Okay. But on a traditional um, Gibson nut, for instance, the string yeah just sits more or less in half a slot, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Um. Whereas I kind of, I go for about. A, you know, kind of half and half, mm. bit of compromise. Mm. This is this is all right to me. You know that that kind of height. Yep. So you can still feel the string. Yeah. On the on the bottom side. Yeah. It's, I'd probably end up if I had made a new nut. If you probably look on your telly, you'll probably see there's more more bone sticking up than that. Mm -hmm. Slightly. But you'll notice this string, this 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 nuts come straight out of the factory. Yep. And you can see these sharp edges. It's more or less square in cross section, isn't it? And they, they, we, what we really ought to do is round these off. Right. So then it's nice as you run down the neck. Uh huh. You don't come to this sharp edge, which I find a little nasty. Mm. You know. We we all want it as smooth as possible, don't we? Mm hmm. And you'll notice that I'm doing this to the string. <laughs> I have this other theory that when the string's brand new, of course it's coming up along here and it's going straight, but it's not going quite as straight as it will. After it's been after pushed it's, down a bunch you know, of times. Yeah, yeah after it's been vibrated for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I kind of give it a yank down to see where it really might end up. See what this true kind of resting position might be. All these things that guitar makers think about when their nose is stuck to their bench. <laughs> to recap, the kind of order of once you've taken it apart and put them, got the truss rod back on again, it's it's establishing the relief in the right amount of relief at strip with the string tension on it mm -hmm. is the it's, so that's then that's stable. Yep. you've got to do it in a certain order. So you. You achieve the neck relief that you want. Mm -hmm. Then you go to this end here and get the nut height that you want. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to this end here and get the action height that you want. Right. And then when you finally got those things sorted out, then you can do the intonation. It's right. the last thing to do. Right. Because all the other things will have an effect on that. Mm -hmm. So it's, people get very confused as to what order all that ought to be done in. Right. So it's getting the neck straightness or relief correct, mm -hmm. then it's the nut, then it's the action height, mm -hmm. and then it's the intonation okay. at the end. So um, I'm going to <coughs> look at the uh, what it's gone back together at with um, these heavier strings on. This is going to need to be brought up a little bit, which is good. So before I bring it up, I've slackened the string off a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're doing both sides of the... Yeah, you jack up, jack up evenly. You don't want them cockled over. I'm going for 1.4 at the twelfth fret, right? Approx. At the moment, I've got about one point five. And that's from the bottom of the string. Yeah, top right. of the fret to bottom of string. Right. At the twelfth fret. Okay. And then, as I'm going to go across, by the time I get to the bass side, mm -hmm. I want to get up to more like maybe one point seven. Okay. Which is about where it is. So it's incrementally going up. You know, maybe 1.4, 1.5, mm -hmm. maybe just over 1.5, you know, 1.6 or something like that, 1.7. Yeah, 
and you can get little gadgets that measure your camber underneath. Right. But I do it just by measuring twelve. You know, roll, yeah, rolling that straight edge across it, to check that nothing's right. Obviously ridiculous, but if you're measuring it across there, it's going to end up, you know, correct at that. You know, mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's increased bit by bit there, it's going to give you the yes, give your regular camber there anyway. Yep. So let's see where we are. Well, we were going to give you a bit of a bit of um, a bit of trim, weren't we? Yeah, I'm so, I'd be surprised if there isn't with the heavier strings on. Well, they might. Yeah, that's that's very true. They, they they will have given you a little bit. There you they go. have given you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm being distracted by talking, not <laughs> not 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 paying attention to everything as I'm going along. So apologies. This isn't normally how it's done. <laughs> So what you need to do next is have a go with this and see whether... I mean, just acoustically it now, it already, already sounds so much better. So I have a play with it, yep. and then we'll see whether that's where you want the action. Okay. It's a different guitar. Is it? It's. It felt sloppier to me, just putting those strings on and doing yeah. that little bit to it. And what I would guess that is down to is letting the trem float. Right. Because we got we've got a higher tension on the truss rod. We've got higher gauge strings, but you've got sponginess back in there from the springs. Right. On the other end. That's all I can, all I can guess. Man, I can still f hear the kind of scratchiness off the frets, which if you'd had a fret dress, you'd have had some nicely sure. polished frets. Which I always think, well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do the job, you might as well do the whole job. But obviously, people at home aren't able to do that. Though, in fact, they could do something at home right um with if you've got a, a rosewood board mm -hmm. you don't need to bother about the masking off yep. of the fretboard mm -hmm. and you can just get some quadruple zero wire wool from your specialist hardware just shop to clean it up and just with a bit of fretboard oil rub the frets backwards and forwards like that and it'll polish them up right um, and oil the fingerboard at the same time. Right. And you'll notice that you've got a bit of a shinier fret. Mm -hmm. And if you did it with um, thousand grade wet and dry first, you'd 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 notice that you'd you know got a, a shinier fret sure. to 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 bend on. With the maple boards, obviously you've got this lacquer, mm -hmm. um, and this one is a matte lacquer. Right. So, if you want to keep it matte. You'd have to mask all that off mm -hmm. with masking tape. Mm -hmm. Make sure you use a low tack masking tape, otherwise you can peel the lacquer off okay. with the adhesion of the tape. To right. the, if that's greater than the adhesion of the lacquer to the board, mm -hmm. um, 
So you 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 your masking tape. You want to make it um, less sticky. Stick it on your clothes first, which is what I do all the time. Right. And my clothes are always nice and dusty, so so you stick it on and then and then tear, tear the pieces off. And then you do that same process, just just but just with the wire wool, right. not with the oil. Just dry wire wool, and that'll just polish the frets off. And make sure you keep the wire wool away from here. Mask off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mask Otherwise, off all this lot here. The magnets pick up the all the magnets will yeah, be covered yeah, yeah, in wire yeah. wool dust. Yep. So, um, but if you've got a a glossy maple fingerboard with gloss lacquer on it, mm -hmm. um, you could just use polishing cream. Oh, okay. Like, right. Like a tea cut or thinner, and it'll just polish everything up. It's a it's a different guitar. It is it is a different guitar. Amazing. I did nothing. <laughs> so all we need to do now right. is this intonation lark. So intonation means the thing playing in tune with itself up and down the fretboard, which mm -hmm. is impossible, but you can make it better than it sometimes is right. if these are in the wrong position. So what you're trying to do is get that harmonic note at the 12th fret yep. to match the fretted note at the 12th fret. Right. Um, and that's why I compensated this, added a little bit of extra distance, because in theory that is halfway up the neck. Yes. But when you fret the string, you're st stretching the string. And when you're stretching the string, you're raising the pitch of the note. So right. then you lengthen it to flatten it again to make it the same. So the idea is that that note is the same as that note, which right. it isn't quite. And also there's another one up here that's supposed to be the same. And Sorry, did that one again? Sorry. So the, the harmonic at the high B. Yeah, and here as well. Same, same, same harmonic. harmonic. Yeah, because the same, same distance. But same note. Yeah. But that's an octave lower. Right. So all these things ought to match up. And that will depend. The, the lower your action is, the easier it is to get it to match. Mm. The better your strings are, the easier it is to get it to match. Okay, so do you, are you intonating by ear? How are you doing this? Most of the time I do it by ear. Right. And I think ears are just as good as the machines. Um, as long as you have an ear to do it with. Well, I, you know, I don't think my ears any, I don't think my ears that good at all. The people who've got good ears have got perfect pitch. Right. And 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 um, it drives them potty. Yeah, yeah. Because everything's out of tune. Everything's out of tune. Yeah. And they, and they don't have an easy life. So you want you don't want to have that at all. You want good relative pitch. You just want to kind of know it's vaguely there. <laughs> you know, and sometimes if it's slightly out, it might be it might sound actually sweeter. Okay. But. So it's not to, an exact science. I don't think it's an exact science because because the note can change anyway from to that just, just by, by pressure, the pressure, right? So who's 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 playing the guitar? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And and who's actually playing the guitar that carefully? Mm. You know, mostly it's kind of you you're going, you, you know, yeah, so yeah, someone's yeah. got that note there, and it's always going to have a bit of vibrato on it. So which 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 isn't a true note anyway? Sure. Which um, obviously gives it the note a bit of emotion, mm -hmm. but um, so I, I think it's just kind of you, you're just as well doing it with with by ear as as, as what sounds right sure. as to what what actually is correct on the machine. On the machine, yeah, that's amazing. And if it, it does sometimes help to it it helps me get the 
tune into the, where the note is. Those, the arpeggio thing. Yeah. yeah. And that sounds pretty pretty sweet to me. Yep. And it's it's just a matter of making it sound sweet. And whether sweet is Bang totally on, accurate, I yeah, don't think yeah, it matters. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then if as long as it as long as we're okay up here as well. Yep. I think that's all right. And I mean, if anything, you want it to be flat. So that because when, when someone's push, racing up here, yeah, it ends up being and sharp, it, and, it, and it's kind of it's sharpened out. So, you know, I think you've got to take a view yourself on this as to how you play and how you want to approach it. As long as you understand the principles of it, mm. it's. Um, But in order to, if the note is playing sharp, extend the string. Right. As, as, long as, as long as you understand that, you can work it out yourself, can't you? Yeah, of course. And if the, if the note is flat, mm -hmm. shorten the string, the opposite. Okay. Do you mind if I have a go at setting up the harmonics? Yeah. yeah and yeah. then and just tell me tell me if you think I'm there or thereabouts. Okay. Let's have a let's have a go at that. So you have the screwdriver. Right. You have the guitar. You fang doodle thing. I have the what do you call him? Frank Gamble. Frank Gambali. After uh, after, after Fra Frank Gamble. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> sorry, Frank Gimbale. Frank Gimbles. Is this a gimbal? It's a gimbal. It's a gimbal. Which is uh, what you get on boats. Oh yeah, and do it when you're plugged in. Do it when the, do it on the bridge pickup. Right. You'll get a better. Um, you'll get a cleaner, cleaner note. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Try it going up the top. That wants to come back a bit? Yeah, I'd move that one back a bit, yeah. 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 So he's just he's down here and he's tightening clockwise to make that fourth saddle go back towards the bottom of the guitar to increase the length of the string, which will flatten it. What about pickup height? Well, again, guys, you're, you're, well, you're going to tell us. It's, it's, a pers it's personal taste, but... Just want it balanced. You, if you want it a balance between all the pickups, what you don't want to do, I don't know how, how magnetic these, these, these pickups are, but the stronger the magnetic field is on these pickups, the more they're going to suck the strings. Right. If they're too close, they'll give you wolf notes. Yeah, right. You'll, you'll hear it go woo, 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 woo. So usually on a Strat, you've got the treble side nearer, the, the strings and the bass side further away. Right. Um... And usually, because because there's more movement of string here, mm -hmm. um, let's have this on the on the. This is where the most of the movement is. Right. This this pickup is further away than the one at the bridge. Right. So it's kind of set the bridge height, pick up, and then set the others to match it. Okay. Assuming you want the same volume coming out of each pickup.
That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good, good. We haven't tried the vibrato arm. Which is sometimes referred to as a trem arm. How much slop has that one got? Loads. What happens when you go in a bit further? Okay, I wouldn't go further than that. No, okay. sure you know that when you're tuning with a trem that's floating but I'll just mention it after you're giving the strings a good stretching in yeah then tune up and I blip the trem down here no like every time I'm tuning and the, the E string I go blonk go a little dip down so that then when you know whenever you've done, use the trem and it's finish off with a downward blip and right. it then should come back into the right place. Is awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Johnny, thank you so much. Well, it's a pleasure. Ah, oh, wow. Well, wow. you're a magician. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. The guitar has been transformed by a good setup. Well, I'm amazed. But I'm pleased. Amazing. I'm pleased. Yeah, yeah. So, again, we, you, I have nothing to do with it. Um, we got the Neck sorted out. We've got the amount of relief that we wanted. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We checked the nut. And we had to take the neck off for that. Had to take the neck off for that. Because there's an adjuster at this end. Yep. Uh, we, you, um, sorted out the, the, the nut. nut height. Yep. Yep. The nut heights. We, uh, stop saying we. You can do we, um, I don't mind. All right. Uh, we sorted the height out then. Yeah. Of the. Um, saddles. Of the saddles. Making sure that they went from 1.2 to 1.7. No, 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 1.4 to 1.7. 1.4 to 1.7. I think that's good for that camber. Right. Okay. You know, different cambers, you might go for different things. Okay. If, it's a, if it was a, a flatter camber on a Gibson-ish like board, right. you'd probably go a little bit closer on the treble side. Okay. Because you can bend without choking. Right. It's, 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 that's the issue. So we did that, and then we set the intonation yeah. for measuring the harmonic of the 12th and the 15th, 17, 18th, 19th fret. 19, isn't that what it is? Yeah, it's where the, the, the high B. Is. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, it's, it's changed the guitar dramatically. So um, amazing. 
Amazing. Thank you good. so much. Good, good, good. Right, good. Now I'm off to. Um, and we didn't even need to dress the frets on this one because it's a brand new guitar. You would assume that the fret heights are okay. Yeah. Though, in my opinion, you can always find a, a high spot. On a, on, a, on a brand new guitar. Sure. You know, because the, the bit of wood's shifted from Mexico to all the way around the other side yeah, of the world yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll have moved something, but we got we got good and lucky on here. Yeah. So that, 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 that's that's good. Brilliant. You know. On behalf of everyone that's uh, been watching you do your amazing thing on our channel, uh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. We're so pleasure. grateful. Pleasure to just share this stuff. You know, anybody that will listen, I'll talk to them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if people want to get in touch with you, yeah, this email via the via the website. There's a, yeah, there's, a, there's the website still still um, up, I think. Yeah, okay, functioning. Kincaid Guitars. The website, yeah, kincaidguitars.co.uk. uk. K i k i n k a d e. Right. All right. Guitars. Brilliant. All right, buddy. Thank you so um, much. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.